Arctic shock, shock of the North Pole. Polar explorers were stunned by underwater discovery. Even the professors were surprised. This is by Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Ketley of Express UK. Recently, the explorers from Poland visited the Arctic, the North Pole, and they were floored after sending probes into the waters of the polar circle, claiming even the professors could not believe what they had discovered, something totally unexpected. An Arctic expedition from the University of Silesia of southeast Poland visited this remote part of the polar station Holmsnund in August of this year, just last month. The Arctic base is located on the Svalbard Islands, a chain of sparsely populated islands deep within the polar circle. The expedition journeyed by boat. From what we know, it like, looks like a sailboat. And this remote part of the world in order to study the effects of climate change on the Arctic region. The expedition's discoveries stunned the researchers and it also opens up a whole can of questions about the effects of the changing weather, the climate change, global warming, call it what you want. Maybe it's some kind of volcanic uh, heating from underneath, we don't know. So what they found, Dominique Kieran, one of the explorers, spoke to Gazeta Poland about the shocking revelations that they made in the Arctic. According to the researcher, the water temperatures in this region are showing alarming readings despite the bitter cold on the surface. After covering hundreds of miles by their boat and dropping probes into the icy water, the researchers found temperatures that were many degrees higher than expected. Kieran said, we dropped probes that measured the temperatures and pressures of glacier waters, and what we learned even surprised our professors. And there are some pictures here showing that uh, they were stunned by the discoveries made. They showed a picture of uh, the dwindling ice sheets, as you can see. Maybe they're like a third of what they were a couple of years ago, as you can see. It's amazing. So, it turned out, he says, that the water's temperature stood at 7 degrees Celsius. But the norm is a value of about 4 degrees Celsius. The expedition will not publish its finding for another year yet because it still has a lot more. It wants to do more research and add more figures to it for the whole upcoming year. So um, the findings for another year uh, will be the initial discoveries and they are worrying. Siren Kieran said that the explorers will monitor the region for a full year to study the processes through which the glaciers form or dwindle. Parts of the process involves taking year-long time lapses by specialized cameras left around the region. According to U.S. Space Agency NASA, the ice coverage in the Arctic is rapidly declining as a result of human activities and greenhouse warming. So the Space Agency also said the ice is now declining at a rate of a whopping 12.8% every 10 years, every decade. 12.8%. Okay, what would that mean? That means that in, uh, what, 40 years it'll be half. Now, compared to the uh, 1981 and 2000 average, that is. Now, NASA attributes the effect of the emissions of the greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide and climate change, Kieran captured some of the Arctic's beauty in his video that he shared online. He said, being there, I felt the beauty and the rawness. There are no trails in those mountains. He's trying to say it's totally virgin. He said, we felt like pioneers, the first people in the Arctic. Foxes ran all around us and we saw reindeer. When we traversed across the tundra, seagulls flew around us. Those animals do not know humans. And he said, making the film, I wanted to show there are places on Earth where nature is still in control over man, and we don't have any control over nature. Now, for example, when he's trying to say they, don't, they didn't have any effect somehow changing uh, the, the area. Now, for example, he says, when a storm breaks over the, out over the ocean, the airport at Longyearbyen 
on Svalbard has a big trouble with air traffic. Thick fog and heavy rain causes great delays, as is to be expected. Quick facts about the Arctic. The name Arctic derived from Greek wording Arctos, which means bear. Two, the scientists estimate the Greenland ice caps holds about 10% of the world's freshwater reserves, but it is melting. The Arctic's average temperatures might be incredibly chilling, but around 4 million people live in this icy part of the world. The Arctic region is officially described as the northernmost parts of the globe above the Arctic Circle. Parts of the Arctic belong to Greenland, the U.S., Russia, U.S. being through uh, uh, Alaska, of course, Russia, because Russia has a lot of, I think about a third of it, at least, if not half, is Russia boundary, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Iceland, and Canada. Now, okay, they say that there's a, a total uh, difference of what they expected as far as the temperature of the water is concerned. Uh, perhaps it's not just climate change, because otherwise, uh, why would it change deep down as opposed to the surface? Okay, so if you're saying that the water deep down is warmer than you thought, what does that mean? Perhaps there's something of an earth change going on underneath, as they have found in Antarctica. The South Pole Antarctica has been found to have about 100 volcanoes. Most of the active ones are on the west coast, and that's where the west ice shelf, the Larsen ice shelf, is found to be breaking up and melting. Uh, perhaps it's also due in, in large part to the, vol the uh, um, active volcanoes there. And they found new ones as well, younger ones, undersea volcanoes. So that's heating up the ice shelf underneath and melting it. Now, could this be the same thing here? And we'll take a look at uh, what I found on uh, Google Earth, as you can tell me. But there's another thing also that takes place in the North Atlantic, uh, as takes place in the dead zone of the Pacific Ocean. And that's that uh, they use these parts for um, storing nuclear wastes. And we know that nuclear wastes, of course, as they radiate, they do heat up the area and the water. So perhaps this also has to do with nuclear waste that has been um, put in the North Atlantic. I don't know. Let's take a look at Null School and also Google Earth so you can see uh, what's taking place in the arc of the volcanic arcs around Alaska towards the north. Null School and we're on the surface we have, uh, alright, surface uh, currents, but we also have here, we're at um, SO2 levels, and we see that we have a very high concentration coming out from the area of Hawaii on the uh, east rift zone right there, Kilauea, Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and you can see that we do have the sulfur dioxide there as we have a tremendous amount here in Alaska, for example. Okay. And of course, the United States. I want to go to, uh, let's go this way, okay. Amazing, this is a wonderful map. Amazing, look at this, look at this. Some, some of these areas are very intense. Look at India and China. Amazing. Amazing. Now, who knows what's up there? Let's go to Kamchatka. Kamchatka, the volcanoes in Kamchatka. Okay. There's Kamchatka. There's Japan. All right. I want to go to uh, CO2 levels. Let's go to CO2 levels. Okay.
particulates. These are usually we see the okay, here we go. We have the Sahara sand coming. You can see the Sahara sand blowing comes all the way to the United States. Look at this, it goes it's already halfway around the Atlantic. This is a sand blowing from the Sahara Desert with the, the current. Look at this, it's picking it up and bringing it right around that way. And a lot of that does come into the United States as well, and Europe as well. It looks like it's coming, where is it? Okay, it's coming up, up this way, let's see, and up that way. Those are the particulates. What's this? Nothingness, all right. Uh, the air, air currents, you can see what's happening there with Umberto over the, over Bermuda, that's Umberto right there, there we go, it's a very nice map, the other one forming there, and the other, there should be other, the other two over here, one, two, off Mexico. All right, now we're going to the um, chemistry, the chemical, chemistry, CO2 we saw, and we're going to the carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, okay, we see a lot more here, this is the area of the Amazon fires that we saw, and also in Africa, we do have fires there as well. Carbon monoxide. Look at this. This is uh, Los Angeles, of course. Okay. What's that there? I want to go to um, uh, carbon dioxide. Okay. Let's take a better look at this. Around Ridgecrest. We've got a lot around Ridgecrest. Of course, the northeast right there. Uh, we do have a lot of carbon dioxide. That's carbon dioxide we're looking at around earthquake. The earthquakes and volcanic activity also emits carbon dioxide. Okay. I'll leave a link below for you for, so you can see this, but I want to go. I want to show you what's happening here. This is Google Earth. Let's pull out a little bit so you can see a lot more. Okay. This is Kamchatka Peninsula. This is, of course, a subduction. Okay. This is the Pacific Ocean. Japan, Kamchatka. This is a volcanic arc, as you can see. And also, you have this thing here, which is a volcanic arc. These are the Aleutian Islands, and this is Alaska, and this trend, these here, this thing here, you can't really see it, but you, there is a mountain range there, but these are also volcanoes and mountain ranges going in this way, and we recently had a tremendous amount of earthquakes this way, and we've even had one up here somewhere in the middle of nowhere, of a 4 point something, 4.2 if I remember correctly, right towards the North Pole. Now, I don't know what's up here. Nobody really knows what's up here because they're not really monitoring up there. I think the closest seismograms they have, seismographs they have are on land here. Um, and this is the closest that they can get to measuring what's going on in the North Pole. But uh, we do have this thing here, which seems to be a, a crack. And uh, you can follow that all the way to the, right here, the Atlantic, if you can pull out. And Iceland. Iceland seems to be a hot spot there. That's a volcanic area, as you know, right in the middle of nowhere. Okay. What I wanted to tell you is that if you pull out and create the, bring in the circle, this one here, there could very well be logically... Uh, sea mounts underneath. You certainly do have that. It looks like a sea mount. Okay, there could be sea mounts underneath, which are also part of this chain here, like that. If you make this, if you extend the circle, it goes up that way, and it could very well be, as well. And uh, look at this. 
these are other mountain ranges. I don't know if it's part of this crack, but um, it looks at one point that the earth really took a very hard hit. Okay. Look at that. You can see the squashing of the um, of the area right there. What I'm trying to say is, yeah, you may have volcanoes there you don't even know of yet. Okay. The Chukchi Sea area. Okay. So, I'll leave a link below for you for this. It's very interesting. The deep water is a lot warmer than they thought it would be. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.